please stand and open your hymnals to number 783 and join in singing Immaculate Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, may with the help of her intercession rise up from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Today's reading can be found in your gather book, number 995. A reading from the book of Sirach. If you choose, you can keep the commandments. They will save you. If you trust in God, you too shall live. He has set before you fire and water. To whichever you choose, stretch forth your hand. Before man are life and death good and evil, whichever he chooses shall be given him. Immense is the wisdom of the Lord. He is mighty in power and all-seeing. The eyes of God are on those who fear him. He understands man's every deed. No one does he command to act unjustly, to none does he give license to sin. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. We speak of wisdom to those who are mature, not of wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, for which God predetermined before the ages for our glory and which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has seen and ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. February 11th, this weekend, is our parish feast day of Our Lady of Lords Day, and it is the first day in 1858 when Bernadette Subiru first saw the apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Lords, in the image depicted in the mosaic above our altar. Mo- Bernadette is kneeling on the right, praying her rosary. And this is a day to pray for healing for strength, for ourselves, for our loved ones, for anyone we know, or even those whom we do not know, who may suffer in illness, and also to pray for freedom from any pain, spiritual or physical. Bernadette was born in poverty, in severe poverty, and knew pain and distress in her life. 
I'd like to touch on here on this, what is our reflex or our response to pain or painfulness? And that we're called to have a, re, a, a reflex or a response that is proportional to the pain, purposeful, and also penitential, which doesn't mean just give me more pain. While today we recall the heroism and fame, the famousness, the notoriety of Bernadette, in her own day the experience of the, of the apparition brought her family unwelcome publicity. The apparition started in the mid-1800s in France, about 70 years after the French Revolution. Many people lived in poverty. There was great instability in the government, in the church, throughout the country. There was no such thing as social security or welfare or any government assistance, and Bernadette's family could not pay their bills. They lived in the equivalent of a jail, a public jail, which was their house. And part of the message to Bernadette was about digging, deep in her, digging deeper in her life and all those who heard her, we ourselves called to dig deeper in our lives, to unite our sufferings to Jesus on the cross. Bernadette gives an ex as an example of a proportional response to pain because Bernadette spoke the truth even to those who didn't believe her. And sometimes it's difficulty to speak the truth to those who do not believe us or to speak something when, we are, when, we, when it makes us unpopular. Bernadette was pur purposeful. She sought the good of others, not her own good. Bernadette was penitential in that she spurned, she rejected the fame and notoriety that came to her during her life. I bring this up because the gospel includes a caution, a warning about a form of pain or painfulness, but it's not physical pain, but rather something that can be painful, which is anger or being angry. On the one hand, anger can be neutral or a positive thing, such as righteous ind indignation or outrage in the, in the face of actual injustice. Jesus was angry with the money changers in the temple who were changing his father's house into an Amazon marketplace. Nevertheless, Jesus says that when we are angry, we are liable to judgment. Our Lord is warning us not to let our anger lead down the path of hatred, revenge, bitterness. When you and I feel the pain of anger, we're called to consider how we can act in a way that is proportional, purposeful, and penitential, proportionate to the actual problem, purposeful, focusing on the real facts, and also penitential to recognize that when we're angry, we may not get everything we want. That's one thing we think, well, if I can only get everything I want, then I'll stop being angry or maybe we try to satisfy our anger, I've done this, try to satisfy my anger with physical pleasure, with leisure, with physical satisfaction, eating, drinking. This may not solve the anger. In fact, the opposite may be true. It's better to fast, to sacrifice, to pray. For example, and silence is important. For example, consider the earthquake site in Syria and Turkey right now where thousands of victims have lost their lives and where rescue workers are looking for the victims after the cranes do the heavy lifting and the jackhammers do their jackhammering of the pneumatic drills, breaking up the rubble, there is silence called for so that the rescue workers can hear the faintest sign of a survivor or survivors. And we are called to pray for silence, pray in silence also so that we can survive our own difficulties. It's also true that anger doesn't always give us payback what we need. So fasting and praying helps us to remain calm and collected. Also, especially if we need to talk about what is making us angry. Many years ago, I recall this everyday example, something that happened due to a lapse in judgment that I made that as a result came to the attention of my boss at my work and I was the you could say it made my boss angry with me. But my boss was righteously angry and helped me to change my ways, to see the error of my ways. One day, I did not show up for an important meeting with somebody who had very little time to see me and who had made time on his calendar at lunchtime to see me, but I was doing something else in the late morning, and I decided, well, I just won't go. And so I 
as we say, blew off the meeting. The person showed up at my desk looking for me. My boss said, well, I don't know what happened, but then I got back to my desk. My boss asked me what happened. I did not have a reasonable excuse. My boss, so I was, my boss was angry with me. However, my boss was angry proportionate to what I had done. There were no raised voices. So it was a proportionate response in anger. It was a purposeful response because she really wanted to teach me something, a valuable lesson about respect for others, about not blowing other people off, and that I had made an error but wanted to teach me something. And also it was a penitential response because I know that she did not. She gave me the benefit of the doubt as long as she possibly could, and she didn't, as we say, throw me under the bus with that other person, so I was able to reconcile and see the other person. What is Jesus' response to anger when he is angry? Because at times Jesus is angry. For example, in the situation where there was a woman caught in adultery, dragged before him, Jesus has a response that is proportionate and purposeful, proportionate. He sees the stones in their hands and says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Ironically, Jesus is the one without sin, and it's a uh, purposeful response because he wants to teach them something as well. It's a penitential response because Jesus sticks his neck out, sacrifices for this woman caught in adultery, and as a result, Jesus becomes even more unpopular, and they really want to take his life after that. Jesus Christ had a, a, a proportional response, a purposeful response, a penitential response to anger, and he gives his life for you and me. Jesus is teaching us in this gospel about this com the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. But Jesus is not simply saying, oh, this is how far you can go before you break the commandment. Rather, he's asking us to examine our lives before we go down that road. He's simply urging us to examine our lives before we act or react offering up our anger, we can also give our sufferings to him, and we can recognize, as we read in the gospel today, we're not just learning the commandments, but by our action we are teaching others to follow the commandments, and in our humility we are attaining true greatness. Our profession of faith, the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us make our request known to God so that peace may be in our hearts that the church may be seen more clearly as a sign of God's mercy for us in both times of sorrow and joy, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intercession of Our Lady of Lords, for healing and strength for all those who suffer in illness, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the victims of the earthquake in Syria and Turkey, for the deceased, injured, homeless, 
and all the rescue workers, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our beloved deceased, Michael Corcoran, Charles Rooney, Gina Labruto, Sylvie Bato, we pray. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. Amen. For the intention of this Mass, for the eternal rest of George Flug, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear these prayers and those we keep in our hearts through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. There are two collections today. Our second collection is for the Archdiocesan Assessment. Thank you for your generosity.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people, that with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Lourdes, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of our whole parish staff and community, all our priests, I pray that you, through the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes, will also experience healing and strength in your life. Our Lady of Lourdes, pray for us. Notre Dame de Lourdes, priez pour nous. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please open your hymnals to number 783 and join again in singing Immaculate Mem Mary, continuing with verse 3. Take the cross, Mary. Yes. 